Hi, welcome back to the playlist on ethanol metabolism and implications in biochemistry in the human body. In the last few videos, we've been looking at how ethanol is metabolized in the human body, and we saw that it mostly occurs in the liver. Alcohol dehydrogenase is a cytosolic enzyme, mostly found in the liver, but there are other ways we can, we can metabolize that. There is always um, the microsomal system. That's a P450 enzyme, specifically CYP2E1, is the main one that metabolizes ethanol to, to um, acetaldehyde. Um, but then once we get acetaldehyde, what do we do with that? Well, it turns out that there's a series of enzymes called aldehyde dehydrogenases that are able to convert acetaldehyde and other aldehydes to acetic acid or related carboxylic acids. This molecule, just to familiarize, familiarize you with this, let me get the right brush here before I start writing. I'm very particular about that. This is called acetaldehyde, okay? Um, acetaldehyde is the aldehyde form of ethanol, and you would expect that because it's just a two electron oxidation to get acetaldehyde. Um, if you were to look for the aldehyde functional group, it's right there, there's the aldehyde functional group, and whenever we do this next oxidation, um, we're going to get a carboxylic acid out of that. And that particular one is acetic acid. Okay, we're going to get acetic acid initially out of this enzyme. Much like in the case of alcohol dehydrogenase, um, we're going to um, use NAD as the electron acceptor. And it will accept two electrons from the aldehyde. We'll get out a reduced cofactor, NADH, and then um, we'll be one more step oxidized up to the carboxylic acid, acetic acid. However, in the, in the case of this enzyme, um, it's also going to require some water. Okay, um, Water is going to be used ultimately to um, put on this OH group. That's a component of the carboxylic acid. Notice that with in the case of acetaldehyde, there's only one oxygen. It's only the one that's part of the carbonyl functional group. Here, there's two oxygens, so the other one actually is going to come from wa uh, from water. Okay, um, this over here, this is the ribbon diagram of aldehyde dehydrogenase, just so you can sort of get an idea what it is. And it's a it's a tetramer. And so what you can see here is that there's four different domains from which the reaction is actually able to occur. Okay. Um, one other thing I do want to, um, to illustrate about aldehyde dehydrogenases that's also very important. In the case of aldehyde dehydrogenases, when you're looking at shorthand notation and abbreviations for these enzymes, it can get very confusing. When you're looking at the aldehyde dehydrogenases, they're typically denoted ALDH. Why do I mention that? Because when you're looking at, and I'll do this in a different color, when you're looking at the other kind, which are alcohol, alcohol dehydrogenases, these ones are only designated ADH. And that can also be a little confusing because ADH is also a hormone, antidiuretic hormone. Another reason people tend to use, now use the word vasopressin for that. Um, ADH, if you're talking about the gene at least, then you're talking about alcohol dehydrogenases. Whenever you're talking about aldehyde dehydrogenases, you use ALDH. Okay, so that can get kind of confusing. So just to clear that up, that's what that is. And the point is we're gonna oxidize this aldehyde, acetaldehyde, into acetic acid. Let's look at the mechanism of how this occurs. Oh, and one more thing I do also wanna mention about this. Um, in the last video, when we talked about um, the alcohol metabolisms um, into acetaldehyde, remember I mentioned alcohol dehydrogenase, the just generic enzyme. That one is a cytosolic enzyme in the liver. However, remember the, uh, the uh, P450, CYP2E1, that converts ethanol to acetaldehyde, that is a microsomal enzyme. It's a bound membrane-bound enzyme in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And then we can also look at a very minor one, which is not useful under normal physiologic conditions. Um, in peroxisomes, catalase is also able to do the same reaction. Aldehyde dehydrogenases are in the mitochondria. So whenever you're doing this metabolism in the liver, once you generate the acetaldehyde, it has to get transported into the mitochondria. 
And in the mitochondria, that's where you'll, you'll find these aldehyde dehydrogenases. And from there, you can get acetic acid. Okay? So here's the idea. Here's the mechanism. There in the active site, there's this histidine residue. Normally, this enzyme or this residue is protonated, and it's protonated essentially to um, keep this thiol of this critical cysteine residue in the deprotonated state. If you think about it like this, there's a, an electrostatic attraction between that negative sulfur and um, that um, imidazole that's positively charged. And the two residues are actually. Um, they're far enough apart, usually to where proton transfer doesn't happen. Um, usually the cysteine residue is kept in the deprotonated state, and it's actually in the deprotonated state that it performs this mechanism. There's also another critical residue in here, a glutamate residue in the deprotonated state. It's going to be involved in proton transfers, and then in a few minutes we'll see that NAD is also involved. Here's the first step of the mechanism. I'll do these steps in green. The cysteine thiol, or thiolate, it's in the deprotonated state, is going to do a nucleophilic attack, an addition reaction, carbonyl addition on the acetaldehyde, and that's going to give you this tetrahedral intermediate. So one thing I just want to just have you have you bear in mind, because it's something to keep in mind just for technical issues. Um, remember this cysteine residue right here, okay? I have it just, it's just this cis, that's the three-letter abbreviation, but remember all these residues, glutamate, histidine, they're all part of the enzyme. So really, when I draw this um, cysteine in the tetrahedral intermediate attached to the carbon here, remember that um, actually this intermediate is bound to the enzyme. It's bound to the enzyme through the cysteine residue. Okay. Now, just like in the case of most tetrahedral intermediates, it's going to collapse back down to reform the carbonyl. Now, it's not going to expel the cysteine. It's not going to expel this carbon. Carbons uh, with negative charges are terrible leaving groups. It's going to expel the hydride. So this is going to force its way back down. Those pi electrons reform the carbonyl, and the hydride is expelled in an elimination, and it's going to attack the carbon atop the NAD ring. And you'll get a series of kind of uh, electronic rearrangements here. And what you get out of that, here you started with the oxidized form in AD, and you're going to end up with the reduced form of the electron carrier right here, which is NADH. And you can go look at, say, the respiratory chain playlist, and you can see some of the uses for NADH. NADH, remember, is used by the electron transport chain to be specific complex one of the mitochondria, also referred to as NADH dehydrogenase. And the electron transport chain uses it to synthesize ATP. So that's important, and we can use certainly use the NADH for that. Okay, So it has some biological uses there. Here, though, we have this enzyme um, acyl intermediate. You have this two-carbon acid, this two-carbon um, sort of acetate group, um, although it's a, it's a thioester, and it's attached to the enzyme through the cysteine residue. Well, what's going to happen is this glutamate in the, in the active site is going to deprotonate, oops, I meant to do that in green, this glutamate is going to deprotonate the water here. That's going to generate an effective hydroxide, which is a pretty good nucleophile, and it's going to come over here, this hydroxide, and it's going to nucleophilically attack that thioester carbonyl carbon, forcing the generation of a tetrahedral intermediate. And that's shown right here. Now, just like in the case of these normal tetrahedral intermediates, it's going to collapse back down. It will collapse back down to reform that carbonyl. And it's not going to expel hydroxide because normally that's a bad leaving group. It's just going to expel the cysteine thiolate. And as a result of that, you end up getting your... Um, most important product of this reaction, even though we consider it a toxin, and that is acetate or acetic acid. In this form, it is most correct to call it acetic acid. However, the acetic acid can actually um, lose a proton to solution because, as we know, acetic acid has a pKa of approximately... Four, oops, my pen's not working, 4.76. And as we know, that is per, quite a bit below the pH of the normal solution in the cell. And so it will lose its proton and become acetate. So when we actually look at the next reaction in the sequence of this 
metabolic pathway. We're going to just call it acetate, and we're going to draw it as such. Okay. What do we get after the after this mechanistic mechanistic step? We have the cysteine thiolate deprotonated, and we have this protonated glutamic acid residue. Well, in an inferred return step, we're going to use some solvent, that's some water, by the way, obviously, and water is going to deprotonate that glutamic acid to make glutamate, and that's going to return it to its form that it existed at the beginning of the start of the mechanism, okay? And then you get glutamate in the deprotonated state, cysteine thiolate's not affected, and a hydronium that we're really not concerned about, okay? And the most important piece of this puzzle is going to be, or this reaction, is going to be the generation of acetic acid. Acetic acid, as we're going to find in the next video that we produce through this enzyme, acetic acid is going to be metabolized in one more step. And it's going to, be, it's going to ultimately be converted into something that is biologically useful. So what have we seen? Ethanol, the first molecule, ethanol toxic. Acetaldehyde, toxic. Acetic acid, it is also toxic, if I could draw an unhappy face. Also toxic. Um, like I said, acetaldehyde and acetic acid, or acetate, are both um, known to cause hangover. They're part of the mechanism by which that occurs, the headache that you get. So we need to have a way to get rid of that acetic acid. Fortunately, though, we'll see it is... It is um, through the, through the mechanism of the enzyme, it's converted and transformed into something that is very, very much biologically useful. So I hope this gave you a little bit of intuition on the aldehyde dehydrogenase. See you in the next video where we will look at an alternate method to synthesize acetic acid. And after that, we'll look at how you convert the acetic acid into a biologically useful product. See you in the next video.